You ever have that show or movie that is actually quite good at something, but at the same time is also kind of just as bad? That, my friends, is Switch Stepper. Hello and welcome back to the channel and another episode of Film Fridays where I talk about films or TV shows about things that I can relate to and how I feel about that movie or show, if they got it right or whatever, etc, etc. So a lot of these will be about deafness and disability, but we have also branched out to other things. So far, I have talked about A Quiet Place, You, and Hush. And today, we are talking about Switched at Birth. This is a highly requested one because Switched at Birth was practically a phenomenon in recent mainstream media when it comes to the deaf community and disability and things like that. If you are somehow not aware of what Switched at Birth is, Switched at Birth is a show that was on an ABC Family slash Freeform and it is about two girls who were, as you guessed, Switched at Birth. And as it turns out, one of the girls is deaf. That would be Daphne. And the other girl who was switched and is hearing is Bay. And you know, they find out they've been switched and now they just kind of go through life trying to get to know their real parents and get to know them, each other because now they're kind of sisters in a way, you know? Not biologically, but they kind of feel like that, I guess. And while Daphne's deafness plays a pretty big role in the show, it is not in the entire show, which I like. It's just your ordinary, drama, family-friendly show like Degrassi and, you know, stuff like that. Now, because this is a TV show that had, I want to guess, five seasons, I'm not going to be able to get to every single thing that may have been good or may have been something that kind of irked me a little bit just because it's, it's five seasons and I actually stopped watching a show for real at about right when season three happened because I just wasn't into it. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff because it's been so long that I might not remember exactly, but if you've seen the whole show and you have your own opinions, you can continue the conversation in the comments. That's what these are for. So the woman who plays Daphne is named, and I might get her last name wrong, Katie LeClerc. If I pronounced that wrong, I'm sorry, and please feel free to write out how I would actually pronounce that in the comments. There is a little bit of a controversy around whether or not Katie is actually deaf or, say, hard of hearing because she fakes an accent for her role. And I noticed this when I would be watching her in a Hallmark movie that she's been on, and her voice completely changes also in interviews. So people were kind of upset that the main actress in the show plays a deaf character but is not actually deaf. Here's the thing with Katie, she is what you would maybe refer to as hard of hearing because she does have Meniere's disease which includes hearing loss and that's why she started learning ASL at age of 17 be because of that she needed another you know form of communication. I have friends who have actually worked with her. I, I know a lot of people who are on Switched at Birth and they noticed that Katie would be more hearing than she would be deaf. I don't know how Meniere's disease works. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So when I look at the symptoms, when I look at what is part of the disease, hearing loss is one of them and if that means she's hard of hearing, okay, I I guess I'm Switzerland in this. I just, I can't say no, she's not hard of hearing if she has Meniere's disease and it affects her and her hearing. If you have Meniere's disease, feel free to talk about that whole thing down below and educate us all a little bit more if you want. The one thing I did seem to have a little bit of an issue with though is the fake death accent. You know, it would have been really nice to have someone on one of the biggest mainstream shows with a deaf character having an actual deaf accent because a lot of people who are oral deaf do get very concerned or very self-conscious about their voices. Like, even me, listen, I grew up mainstreamed. I've been speaking English since I was, well, the age that 
all kids start speaking a language, right? And it's gotten worse and worse over the years, many people have told me, and, <laughs> and I've noticed. And you know, like I, I get self-conscious about it, especially now, you know, because I'm like, oh wow, I sound very strange in this. So to have that sort of actual representation where somebody's not giving a damn, that would have been nice, but alas, it is all fake. And there's actually an explanation that I read on Wiki last night. My agent submitted me for a nationwide casting call for the roles of Emmett and Daphne. I ended up getting a call back and that's when I was asked to try a deaf accent. It's something we discussed in depth. We wanted to make sure my portrayal was respectful and done correctly. At the same time, we felt that using a deaf accent would be a really strong choice for the character. But I don't know, faking it kind of seems weird. I mean, if you want to get as realistic as possible, yes, a lot of mainstream deaf people will have deaf accents, which is, you know, like, if you read in the comments, people ask me why I sound like a man or insert ableist term here. And that's why a lot of deaf people don't want to use their voice because that's rude. But I know that there's also a lot of oral deaf people that don't really have much of a deaf accent. My friend Amanda McDonough, if I am correct, doesn't have much of a deaf accent. But yeah, a lot of people are having issues with that and I, I can kind of see it. I just feel like, I mean, not all oral deaf people or deaf people who also use English have much of a deaf accent. So you also maybe could just, could have done without. This is a show that is made more for hearing people than deaf people, despite the fact that the show has a, a ton of deaf people in it. Two of the main things that pretty much tell you this, actually three, one, it is made by hearing people and was written by hearing people, if I recall correctly, so you, you have the hearing lens on what deafness is like and stuff like that, right? Two, the simcom, there is way too much simcom going on in here that's just not realistic. In some cases, I can see why that needs to be a thing. For example, Katie's biological family is just now learning ASL. Maybe, okay, you want a simcom. Or again, I've said this before, if you have hearing people in a group of deaf people and you know the hearing people don't know ASL, so for example, you have Katie's biological family in with, why do I keep saying Katie? You have Daphne's biological family with, you know, her deaf friends and whatnot, so you might want a simcom to try to, you know, include everyone. But when you have Regina and Daphne together, two very fluent ASL using people, why is there simcom? It makes no sense. I can't remember if Regina would use Simcom when she's around Marley Matlin's character. Someone let me know, it's been a long time, but yeah. Anyway, too much Simcom. You, it's really difficult to use two languages at once. They're very different languages and it makes things clunky. Also, a lot of the time, I remember that the signing was not always in frame. And if you're going to try to include an ASL using deaf audience, why are you not having the signs clearly on the screen? And someone will say, well, the show's probably captioned, right? You turn on the captions. Goes back to what I said before, English and ASL are two completely different languages and not all ASL using deaf people are fluent in English, so. And while we're still on the topic of language, one thing that really made me chuckle is Bay. Bay is probably the one hearing person on the show that is supposed to be really immersed in ASL, the deaf community. Fluent, I don't think so, but you know, knowledgeable. And I remember when she was trying to tell, I wanna say maybe she was talking to Travis? I don't remember. But she was trying to say that I think it was Emmett was being cold as in being standoffish. Now, I'm not really sure what sign you would be using to describe someone being standoffish and giving you the silent treatment, but this actual sign that Bay used was cold, as in temperature cold. And I was like, in a way, it's something so small, but at the same time, something that should have been so simple. And I was just like, Emmett's chilly? Emmett's cold? Does he need a jacket? But here's the thing with Switched at Birth. With all the things that they get wrong, there are some things that are really, really good. This show it is an example of being one of the more inclusive shows of recent mainstream media. Actual deaf people 
or casted to play deaf characters. So you had Niall, Stephanie, Shosh Shoshana in an episode, I can't remember. Marley Matlin, there's Ryan, there's Sean, there's so many deaf people, so many deaf actors that were in this show. They didn't pick up random people off the street and be like, we're gonna pretend you're deaf. Well, maybe they did for the extras, but you know. I don't know off the top of my head right now if maybe they hired any hearing people to play deaf characters that might have had a couple of lines in a row, but for the most part, every single deaf character that you saw was actually deaf in real life, and that is fantastic. And then there are two scenes that speak out to me in particular. One is when Daphne was owning her own food truck because she wanted to go to school for cooking. She wanted to be a chef, if I recall. At one point, she, she has a partner, and I think it was her boyfriend, I don't remember. But at one point, um, it's known to some customers that she's deaf because she's signing or whatever to somebody. You know, they get the idea of, well, we're gonna rob her because she's not gonna be able to hear us, we can get away with it. And I believe she was at the food truck still, it was at night, and these people went and robbed her, and she was actually there. That is such a fear that I and, you know, other deaf people, especially deaf women, have. Being alone at night or whatever, even if it's just with a friend. People trying to take advantage. I think they injured her too, and you know, that's scary. I mean, there are times when I do go out at night but I try to move fast with what I'm doing because somebody could sneak up on me. I, I really felt that and I enjoyed that scene. Not in a, you, you know what I mean? You enjoy a scene because it's very realistic and you really relate, but it's not like, it's not a happy scene by any means. And another one that is more of a happy scene and this was a really popular scene, the whole death gain scene where uh, Marley Matlin's character and her students are in class and they're just talking about how being deaf in itself is not a bad thing. The only real issue is the inaccessibility in the world and people were talking about what they loved about being deaf, you know, how there was a rich history, which it will also a complicated history, but you know, there's a, a, a family that they've obtained through it and you know, just things like that. It was a really, really great positive scene. There's so many other good scenes that happen, you know, it's a, it's a complicated show, it's a dramatic show, and is it the most perfect show in the world? No, but it was a very, very good and big step in the right direction. And in a way, I wish that it wasn't ever canceled because it still gave us something that we could look forward to because we would see representation of ourselves, whether it was mainstream deaf or signing deaf, the in-between, you know, it, it was good to see that and now we don't really get that anymore and that whole issue with Hollywood is for another whole video. <laughs> so I'd like to know your thoughts on Switch Step Birth, what were things that you liked, what were things that you didn't like, how you related if you're also a deaf person watching it, let's discuss. If you would like to help me translate this video, I'll have a link to do so down below in the description box. As always, I very much appreciate you watching and I will see you later. Bye!